Hey guys, it's Monique here. Welcome back to another Inspirational Wednesday. Guys, it's rainy and cloudy outside, but God is still good. Today's topic is in God's timing, but before we get to the topic, let me run my little ads. Those of you who are subscribed and who support me, thank you so much. And those of you who watch my video, but you're not subscribed, what's going on with that? I check my analytics and about 58% of you guys watch my content, but you're not subscribed. Let today be the last day that you watch and not subscribe. Become a part of my family, you guys. Here on my channel, it's all about encouraging, inspiring, having fun as well. But um, yeah, we're just loving on one another. So I would love to have you become a part of my family today. Of course, it is free. You guys know that I respond to all of my comments. So leave your comments below. Make sure you share on all your social media platforms to your family as well as your friends, as well as thumb up my videos. I vlog every Wednesday. I upload vlogs every Sunday, rather, <laughs> at 6 p.m. And my inspirational Wednesdays, of course, on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Sometimes dealing with the little internet stuff, you guys, sometimes it may be a little late. But nevertheless, I do let you guys know if my videos are going to be late or if I'm not able to record for whatever reason because, you know, Life does happen, you guys. So without further ado, you guys, we're going to jump in today's topic, which is in God's timing. But before we do, we always pray and then we also end in prayer. So um, next up is praying and then we're going to jump into today's topic. So stay tuned. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're thankful for this day. Thank you for being our Abba Father. Thank you, Lord God, for your hands being upon our lives. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your son, Jesus, dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for all that you have done. Father God, thank you for this platform that you have given me. As I humbly, Lord God, bring your word to the people, I ask that you will remove me. I ask that you will remove all nerves, remove all anxiety, remove all self-righteousness, Lord God. Also, Lord God, I ask that you will remove, Lord God, this, um, you know, how getting this tongue, tongue tie, tongue twist, whatever you call it, Lord God. I also ask that you will remove that. And Lord God, I ask that you will replace it with humbleness, replace it, Lord God, with um, being bold in you, replace it with your anointings, Lord God, replace it, Lord God, with your Holy Spirit, and replace it, Lord God, with clear speech in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Thank you for drawing people to my channel. Thank you for changing lives. Thank you for souls being one and black and backsliders returning unto you. God, I thank you, and of course, I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, so we're going to jump in today's topic again, which is in God's timing. I'm going to read from my little book here that I got from Amazon. If you guys want to know the name of it, here it is. And then, of course, I have a little bit more scriptures and then some more practical and other things to talk about to go along with the topic. OK, so here we go. This is Psalms 37, 7 through 9. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospered in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing, for evil doers will be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. And then I'm going to read it in the NLT as well as in the message. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Man can spend a lifetime studying God and never really understand the ways in which he moves. Unexpected and unpredicted, despite the prophecy of man, subtle yet monumental despite the theology of his character. Abraham was told to look to the skies. 
his descendants will be as many as the stars. He was promised the future of mankind and a legacy that will shake history. Abraham was handed his dreams in one stunning moment by an almighty God. And then God was silent. <laughs> and okay, and then God was silent. All Abraham was left with was a barren, scoffing wife, a shocked expression, and an inky black sky filled with millions of stars representing impossible promise. But in his own timing, in his own way, God moved. You may feel like God has forgotten about you or that he's grown silent over the years. But God will honor the promises he's made to you. He will not forget to complete the work that he has begun. God is the master of every plan and he will accomplish his work in you. Be faithful even in the waiting and the quiet. At the right time, in the right way, he will move. So that was from the little book that I have. And then also in the message, I want to read that same verse, which is Psalms 37, 7 through 9. It says, quiet down before God. Be prayerful before him. Don't bother with those who climb the ladder, who elbow their way to the top. Brittle your anger, trash your wrath, cool your pipes. It only takes things, I mean, it only makes things worse. Before long, the crooks will be bankrupt. God investors will soon own the store. So you guys, I believe their names were Abram and Sarai during this time, if I'm not mistaken. But God had promised Abraham, maybe it was Abraham. God had promised Abraham and Sarah of, you know, that their descendants going to be as many as the stars that's in the sky, right? Well, Sarah was barren. She couldn't have any children. So they were like, okay, God, how is this going to happen? And when is this going to happen? They were confused, right? And they were both in their 90s, y'all. So what? <laughs> what in the world? What do you mean? I believe they were in their 90s. If I'm wrong, I will put the age ages on the screen. So sometimes what we think is the promise of God isn't his promise. And again, the example with Sarah and Abram. Well, what Sarah did, or Sarah, whichever, whatever her name was, yes, she wanted to help God out. Y'all know, sometimes we want to put our little hands in the way and we want to help God and we know God does not need our help, right? Well, Sarah said, she told her husband, hey, go sleep with my maid servant, Hagar, and then that can be our baby. I'm paraphrasing y'all, okay? So... Abraham and asked no questions. He went on ahead and he did it. Just being a man, being a man. <laughs> so he slept with her maid servant. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And of course, she got pregnant and she bore a son and his name was Ishmael. Well, I'm not going to go into the details. Y'all can read along the rest of the chapter. Um, but um, Sarah became angry and sent Hagar away. God told them, hey, Ishmael is not the promised child that I promise you guys, you know, um, that's not the child. So I said that to say, sometimes we think God needs our help and we go and we try to make things happen and we call it, uh, call it his promise. And it's not his promise because God didn't even tell you to do that. Again, God don't need our help. So we do, we need to keep our hands out of the situation. We make it happen and then call it God's blessing or promise. And it's not, we try to make things happen and say, this is what God did. And God said, no, I didn't. I did not ask you for your help. It was not the right timing. So yeah, they quickly found out that that was that Ishmael was not the promised child. Okay, so the next scripture is Ecclesiastics chapter three, verses one through eight. It says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from, from 
embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. So as we can see that there is a specific time and season for everything. So in God's timing, God will bless us. God said all of his promises is yes and amen, which means you can count on God. Whatever God told you, whatever promise God has made to you, it will happen, but only in his timing. And if we put our hands in it and we try to make things happen, we only make things worse. We only delay the promises. We only delay what God has told us that he will perform in our lives. So we need to just wait. Yeah, guys, there, you know, under heaven, there's a time, there's a season for everything, right? Just like, well, sometimes, child, it's supposed to be summer in this, <laughs> or it's supposed to be winter in this summertime, right? But usually with the seasons, that's when things changes. Um, so just like in our lives, we can't rush things. There's a season. There's a time for preparation. Y'all know I talked about David, how David was isolated. David was being prepared. So there's a time. There's a season for everything. God's timing is perfect. You know, his ways are not our ways. As high as heaven is above the earth, so it so is his ways and his thoughts, you guys. So we can't rush God. We have to wait patiently for him. And that brings us to our next scripture which is found in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So if we do not give up, even when God's, God is silent, you guys, sometimes God will promise us something, just like he did Abraham and Sarah. He told them that, hey, look into the heavens, look into the sky, as many stars as you can count, that's how many descendants you're going to have. And after he said that, y'all, he was silent. God was silent. He did not say anything else. And even in the silent moments, you all, we have to continue to trust God. We have to continue to believe in him. We have to continue to do the work that he has called us to do, whether that be being a pastor, being a, a nurse, being a, a builder, whatever your calling is. We have to continue with that purpose in life while we wait on the next instructions from God, the next blessing from God, the next promise from God. He said, continue to do good. Do not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will receive our crops if we do not lose heart, y'all. We're going to receive our harvest if we do not give up. A lot of times we don't receive God's promises because right at the end, we're so close. We are so close, but yet we give up. And because we give up, we have to start all over again. We have to start the process all over again. So why don't we just wait? Why don't we just be patient? Because the devil worked the hardest when we're so close. Y'all ever heard that saying that when things are going wrong in your life, that a blessing, a breakthrough must be getting ready to happen? Yeah, you can get this, this close to your rope, this close to the end. And sometimes your hands start getting slippery. You start getting sleepy and tired and worn out. No, you have to push through. You have to push through. Don't give up, y'all. You're so close to your breakthrough. You're so close to your promises. Do not give up. Continue to trust God, okay? Wait on him. His timing is perfect. His timing is perfect. So now, guys, the next portion, I'm just going to kind of give you guys my little testimony, um, <clears throat> I remember at this time, I only had one child. I want to say she was maybe two. I think I had just finished my medical assistant program. I told you guys a backstory of as soon as I graduated from high school, right? I did go to college for nursing, but I didn't pass my first course. So I and God didn't tell me to do this, but I dropped out. I, I guess I got a little discouraged because I caused it on my own. I wasn't studying. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. I was still working and going out, hanging out, not studying. So that caused me to fail my first nursing course, just to give you guys a backstory for those who are new to my channel. Um, so I dropped out of college and I 
was still in the medical field, I pursued my nursing certificate, my nursing assistant certificate, and then I went back to school for medical assistant and all of this. And um, so it was in that period when I finished um, my medical assistant, um, um, yeah, I just could not find a job, you guys. I could not find a job. I searched high and low. I fill out tons of application resume. I went on several interviews, all of this, you guys. And that took a process of maybe, I'll say maybe it was about four months at that time. And then I finally realized that this is where God has me. God is trying to teach me to trust in him. It was not the time for me to have a job at that time. He wanted my trust in him to grow. He wanted me to depend on him. He wanted me to know that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches, according to his riches and glory. He will supply all my needs. He will take care of me because he was my Abba father. You know, he was my Abba father and I can depend on him. I can rely on him because this also was the time when I truly gave my heart to God. I truly said, okay, God, this time I'm for real because I gave him my life, my heart when I was 17. I wasn't real. <laughs> I wasn't for real. So at this particular time, I was serious. Okay. So I had to learn how to trust him and he had to see if I am trusting him and that I total surrender to him. So I had to go through that process of trusting God. So it took maybe about six months. And y'all, let me tell you, God never let me down. All my bills were paid. Um, I never went without. Um, now it was some hard times. Now it was some hard times when I did not have like food in my home. However, God still made a way. He still made a way. I went to volunteer at the, um, at some of the shelters um and of course they fed you too so my daughter she didn't know what was going on i kind of shield her from that she thought we were just going to volunteer which i was going to volunteer and they, as well as they fed my daughter i told them i'm fine as long as she is good i'm okay and they're like no you need to eat too i did have my own apartment y'all um just to give you guys a little more uh backstory um her father now we were engaged but things didn't make it things didn't work out what have you so um i was had a, uh, an eviction notice on my door right <clears throat> well i also went through this process of getting what we call a voucher back in those days and um, i had x amount of time to come up with the money unless i was going to be evicted evicted e evicted let me tell y'all, the voucher came in on time, and that's a whole nother story, you guys, how everything worked out. Just know that God proved to me, God proved to me that I can trust him, that he will never leave me, nor forsake, nor forsake me, y'all. God's timing was perfect. With the voucher, God's timing was perfect. I didn't know where the money was going to come from. I didn't know what I was going to do, but God's timing was perfect. It was perfect with the voucher. I did not get evicted. God's timing was perfect also with me getting a job. Um, my, I, I think I told you guys the story that my car was going to be repossessed. In the nick of the time, God supplied the, the right amount for my payment. Let me tell you, y'all, God's timing is perfect. Sometimes you may not know where your next meal is going to come from. You may not know when your next money for your rent is going to come from. Your electric bill, your gas bill, your water bill, your mortgage, your car insurance, your car payment, your children's t tuition, whatever the case may be. Let me tell you something. You may not know, but let me tell you, God's timing is perfect perfect. God will make a way of escape. He will make a way of escape for you all. And that's in the word. The scripture will be on the on the thing. Y'all know how the Holy Spirit be downloading in my brain when I be talking. And <laughs> let me tell you, he will make a way of escape. He will supply all of your needs. You just have to trust him. God say, trust in the Lord with all your might. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Y'all, you can trust God. But can God trust you? Can he trust you that you will trust him? Can he trust you that you will believe his word? Can you trust him I mean, can he trust you that you will stand on his word?
Because his word, y'all, would not return unto him void. Whatever he set his word out to do, it will accomplish it. His promises are yes and amen. You can depend on God. You can. Don't put your hand in, in, in the process. Don't try to help God. He does not need our help. Only thing he wants you to do is trust him. Once he says it, he doesn't need to say it over and over and over again. Trust him. Take him at his word. And even when he's silent, know that God is working. God is working in the background. He is working it out for your good. He is. Just trust him. I was in a season of God teaching me to trust him. Instead of me relying on him, I searched high and low for a job for six months. As soon as I let go and let God, he began to open doors. Y'all, as soon as I start trusting him, God start opening up doors. He start proving to me that I can trust him. Like I said, the money came in the mail for my check. I mean, for my car payment. Didn't know where that money was going to come from. Did not even anticipating on getting a check from my insurance. I didn't I didn't even know what for. Like, what? Huh? But God was proving to me that if I trust him, that he will make a way each and every time. You know, I, I did find a job um, with the pastor where she was, uh, well, she became a pastor. She got her own church and everything, and she allowed me to work there. Y'all, I have never uh, got a service ready for a church. None of that. My background was medical. She gave me that opportunity, and uh, y'all... I'm just being so choked up right now and so full because I'm just remembering. I'm just remembering how God always made a way for me. He always came through for me. He let me know that I can, I can trust him. Even though I dropped out of college and he did not tell me to drop out of college, even though I didn't think that I was ready so I took the back road, y'all. I took the back road and it took me some time, but eventually I did go back to school. I went back to college because he told me the Holy Spirit spoke to me and the Holy Spirit said, it's time for you. It's time for you to go back to school. And I did. I went back and it was the perfect timing because God worked everything out, y'all. Even I didn't even suppose to get in the nursing program with having six courses left, six courses of my pre reqs that I had to have before getting in the nursing program. And everybody was like, wow, how in the world did they even let you in? I'm telling you, God's timing is perfect. God's timing is perfect. He even, they even opened up a class, a nursing class for summer. And usually there is no nursing classes during the summer, y'all. God opened up a course just for me. God opened up a course for summer just for me so I can graduate on time because I had supposed to not be able to walk with my class and I had to wait until December. But I, I mean, I had to wait. But because God opened up that door, that allowed me to finish on time with the, with the rest of my class and I was able to graduate with them. Let me tell you, y'all, God's timing is perfect. His timing is perfect. And I can never forget when I went up there to get my degree, I'm sorry, y'all. When I went up there to get my degree and my babies, my my girls were in the audience watching their mama, watching their mama receive her nursing degree, y'all. And when I went up there to get it and I came back to my seat and I was in tears, I was crying. And the person next to me, my my colleague next to me, she was like, why are you crying? It's over with now. Why are you crying? And I said, you just don't know. You just don't know what I've been through. You just don't know. I'm telling y'all, you got to trust God. You got to trust God. God's timing, y'all. God's timing is perfect. He will never fail you. He will never fail you. Just give him your heart. I'm telling you, give him your heart. Trust God. Take him at his word. If you don't know him, I, I, I beg of you to taste and see that the Lord is good. Give him a chance. 
Give him a chance and he will blow your mind. He will blow your mind. God is good. God is perfect. God is amazing. He is amazing. He loves us so, so much. He loved us so, so much that he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. Did we deserve it? No, we did not deserve it. But he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. And we just celebrated the resurrection day, y'all. We just celebrated that last weekend. God is good. Take him at his word. Trust in him today. If you never gave him your heart, give him your heart today. Confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God. That he died on the cross for our sins. And on the third day, he rose from the dead with all power. Mm, Glory to God. With all power in his hand. He had defeated, defeated, defeated the enemy. And he went to heaven. He ascended to heaven, but he left the Holy Spirit with us. Right now, he's sitting on the right hand of our Abba Father. But the same power that raised him from the dead is waiting on you. Only thing you have to do is just say this prayer. If you've never given God your heart, if you never gave God your soul, If you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just say this prayer and you too can be a part of his family. He will never leave you nor forsake you. His timing for your life, his timing for your blessings, his timing for for the promises that he has for you will be on time. But the first thing first, you have to accept him. You have to accept him as your father and you have to accept his son as your Lord and Savior. So say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. Repeat this prayer. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. But today, I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that Jesus is your son and he died on the cross for my sins. Just as he died, I died with him. Just as he rose on the third day, my new spirit, my new me rose on the third day with all power in his hand, being totally free, being totally free, totally delivered from my sins. My sins were wiped clean when he died on the cross. And today I am a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. For I am a new creature. For I am saved. On today, April the 3rd, I think. What's today's date? (laughs) Yes, sorry. April the 3rd, 2024. I am saved in Jesus' name. So welcome to the family. And those of you who once were saved, but you went back out into the world, I ask that you will say this prayer. Heavenly Father, For I once were saved, but I went back into the world. I backslid. And I do ask that you forgive me. And now I am ready to come back to your family, come back to your kingdom, just as the prodigal son, just as he realized that he needed his father, I realized that I need you. And I ask that you will welcome me back. I ask that you will forgive me and welcome me back into your family. Just as the prodigal son's father greeted him with a robe and a ring to signify him being back into the family, Jesus is standing at the door welcoming me back into the family. In Jesus' name. So, welcome back into the family. I want to thank you guys so, so much. I don't apologize for being emotional because God has been too good to me and he will definitely be good to you as well because because God is no, um, what's the scripture? Um, Gosh. 
what God do for one, he will do for all. I can't think of the scripture right now, but um, God love us all. He allowed the rain to fall on the just and the unjust, the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. Oh, God is no respect of a person. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is no respect of a person, which means what he will do for one, he will do for the other, as long as you obey him, as long as you trust him, as long as you read his word, trust his word, and keep his commands. So I'm going to go, you guys. I thank you so much for joining me today on Inspirational Wednesday. Make sure you, I ho well, hopefully you were inspired. Make sure you inspire others. Make sure you share this video among your platforms. And yeah, we're here by encouraging. We're here to encourage and to inspire. I love you guys so much. And until the next time, be blessed. Stay covered and continue to be inspired. I love you guys so much. Bye, guys.